So today I am going to discuss about periodic boundary condition. What is periodic boundary condition? And why do we need periodic boundary condition? So let us say that you want to simulate the properties of water. You simulate, you want to simulate the behavior of water using molecular dynamics. So <clears throat> what is the reality? In actual what happens let us say that this is a, a small beaker or a small cup uh, it doesn't look like much better so let me draw this okay and this, there are some water molecules inside the Beaker. Okay, consider them as molecules. Although I have not drawn them in a small as a small circle, but consider them as a water molecules. Now I want to study the behavior of water molecules. So in molecular dynamics, what we are doing? We have a simulation box, and there are some water molecules in the, inside the simulation box. So why do we need periodic boundary conditions? The first thing is that we can only simulate limited number of molecules due to the computational cost. Okay. We can simulate limited number of molecules. So let us say there are 100 molecules of water 100 molecules of water okay but in reality there there are uh, millions and millions of atoms that are molecules that we want to simulate so how we are gonna so this is the we, what we are interested in we are interested in simulating the bulk behavior okay bulk behavior we want to sim we want to study the bulk behavior but we are only taking 100 molecules of h2o and 100 molecules of h2 are going to behave differently as compared to the millions of atoms that we have so there is something called continuum assumption Okay, there is something called continuum assumption. So, what is continuum assumption is that this small cell of 100 molecules of water is equivalent to the bulk water. Okay, so this small cell of 100 molecules of water is equivalent to bulk water bulk water okay so this is the assumption that we take so how do we use periodic boundary condition to mimic the bulk behavior of the water to study the to study bulk behavior of the water okay so let us say that <clears throat> let us divide this into small small cells okay and let us say that as we are going to study the uh, behavior of water so let us consider any cell in between okay this is a cell and consider this cell as a cell in a simulation box that we are going to simulate so now what we have as you see that around this cell we have water different cells of water 
so when what when here what what is around okay what is there what is there there is vacuum okay so there may be surface effects there can be surface effects so to avoid surface effects and uh, to to mimic the real water what we do we use periodic boundary conditions so what is what we do in periodic boundary conditions so we have a simulation box here let us draw a larger simulation box so this is a simulation box we have and what we do we draw similar boxes around the simulation box so that's how we do here also here also you can attach boxes okay you can also attach boxes here so and these are called the periodic images of this simulation box so let us say that there are let us let's divide this box for a much better understanding so consider that there is a particle here <clears throat> first let me divide also these two boxes around here so and also here okay so let us say these are some of the water molecules here okay so in periodic images we will place the same what uh, water molecules at the same spot same place so one is here then one is here yes one is here another one is here one is here and okay so three four and one is here similarly we can also do here one is here one is here and uh, one is here okay one is here one is here and uh, 1 2 3 4 yes one is here 1 2 3 1 2 1 okay similarly here 1 2 3 this 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 okay so <clears throat> how how interactions are how periodic interactions are uh, simply how molecules are going to interact with each other 
okay so let us consider that this molecule okay this molecule is going to be interact with this molecule and this molecule is going to be interact with this molecule but is this molecule going to interact with this molecule or not so if the distance is 1 2 3 4 5 let us say it is 5 okay so there will be interaction with these two molecules there will be interaction with these two molecules there will, will be interaction with these molecules and all that and what is happening inside in this cell is also happening inside this cell okay so but is there going to be any interaction with this because they are very far from each other so let us say that x i is the coordinate for this molecule and x j is the coordinate for this molecule so if the distance between these two molecules x j minus x i x j minus x i okay so if the distance between these two molecules now this is the distance in x direction okay that is let us take modulus of it okay let us take modulus of it so you can subtract uh, this from this or this from this so if distance is less than l y 2 then you will have what periodic image for this particle or this particle and the distance of periodic image is distance minus length okay same for y and z direction okay y z minus y i is less than l y 2 distance is distance minus l so if the distance is 5 let us say this molecule and this molecule okay what is the distance between both of them is 1 2 3 and what is l by 2 l by 2 is 5 upon 2 is 2.5 here 2 3 is less than uh, distance between uh, between both of them is okay it should be greater than here okay little bit correction no worries so if the distance between two particles is greater than l by 2 distance is distance minus l so distance between both of them is 3 it is greater than 2.5 that is l by 2 then what is the distance this is the distance for what periodic image this is the distance for periodic image so it will be uh, distance is 3 3 minus l 5 that is how much minus 2 so for this at minus 2 but if it is minus 2 1 2 minus 2 so this is the periodic image for that or this particle so this particle although it is not interacting with this particle but this particle is going to interact with this particle and in a similar fashion this particle is also going to interact with this particle so that's how uh, periodic interactions takes place uh, and also uh, it can be uh, there is a possibility that molecule can go outside from here and if molecule goes outside so number of molecules will be very less but what happened in periodic boundary condition if this move let us say if this particle goes out from here 
then the same particle from here will enter into this simulation box so what will happen number of particles inside the box will remain constant okay number of particles inside the box will remain constant they are not going to change okay and also uh, let us say that if we are considering the interaction between this particle and this particle okay this particle and this particle so if this is the distance so if you look at the distance x in the x direction 1 2 3 okay so it is greater than how much it is 3 and that is greater than 2.5 so it will have a periodic image at minus 2 what is minus 2 1 minus 2 so this so although it is not interacting with this particle but it is interacting with this particle okay so that's how interactions take place uh, when we want to simulate the bulk behavior of the system uh, uh, let us say using molecular dynamics so that's how periodic boundary conditions are very effective in simulating the bulk behavior uh, bulk behavior of the system so that's how so that is the condition that uh, you have to you have to take care of and in also y and uh, z direction you can write this okay distance in distance in y is equal to y j minus y i and it, if it is greater than l by 2 what is the distance for periodic image distance minus l and also for z direction z direction z z minus z i that is equal to l by 2 and distance is distance minus l okay so that's how uh, in y direction and also in uh, z direction the there will be periodic or there will be interactions between the particles in the system okay that we are simulating so that's all for the periodic boundary conditions thank you